Who's the father? Let's come up with a father right now. It's raining. It's raining. When students right. first see the smart board, they're amazed. They are. They are blown back. Hands, hands down, I am very, very fortunate and lucky to have this technology in my classroom. Let's take a look at these seven steps. So here we go. To have the ability to create a curriculum that is engaging and using technology into that curriculum is, um, to me, is like almost like a dream come true. Empirical and measurable evidence. We started off with uh, combining a humanities and science class, uh, which we so eloquently named Planet Earth. We've been collaborating around the issue of global warming and working with the students um, from both a humanities and a science perspective. It was a wonderful group of students who had a high level of dedication and uh, their cognitive abilities was just above and beyond. We started our semester by viewing the film An Inconvenient Truth and um, the students responded to it so strongly in two different directions that we just saw an opportunity there to go with it. So one of the when one of the students said, um, can we have a, a debate, Miss Silva? I said, well, okay. Yeah, well, see, we know CO2 is warming up the earth, but what we're trying to prove is that CO2 is not the cause that, yeah, it's not the only thing. And so they spent a couple weeks um, researching really seriously, uh, and they were not allowed to pick the side they had to argue, so they, they had to go with whatever side they were put on, which was interesting because it could be their belief or not their belief. Um, and they did a really amazing job. I was actually a little surprised myself <laughs> by how much they dug into it and how consistent they were. In An Inconvenient Truth, we hear Al Gore talk about the sea level rising 20 feet. It was really uh, student driven. Opening up the audience to listen to what the solutions are. Usually, as a classroom teacher, you're trying to create some pretty specific guidelines um, for students. The truth is that daily habits are not proven to affect global warming, but they are proven to affect CO2 levels. And you're trying to sort of organize a framework uh, so they can't go too far off in one direction or another, that they kind of always know where they need to be. You each have three minutes for your conclusion, maximum. And we did organize a framework. There was a set of rules around the debate and that kind of thing. But it really had to come from them how much they were going to put into it. So the result was based completely on how much research they did and then how well organized they were as a team, which was not something that I could really create for them. Students are just way more empowered. I think in, in that kind of learning. We'll be able to invent more stuff if we go green and that's a good thing.